Hi, I'm Bram. Welcome to Irfonia. In this video, I would like to share my method to calibrate the SPL reading of my IC60318-4 compliant plinth coupler using a common microphone SPL calibrator. As for the program, I use Room EQ Wizard, or also known as a REW, for my measurement. But this method is applicable for other acoustic measurement programs as well. This coupler is also known as IEC 711 coupler. And for the rest of this video, I will refer to it as 711 coupler. My setup for in-ear monitor measurement is simple. An IEC 711 coupler with a built-in microphone in its base, connected to RME Babyface Pro FS as the uh, audio interface. Rode VXLR Plus is used to convert the uh, 48 phantom power to around 4.5 volt bias voltage for the condenser microphone inside the plinth coupler. It also serves as an adapter from XLR to 3.5 mm socket. For those who are not familiar with the uh, IEC 711 coupler, it is an ear simulator used for the measurement of headphones as well as in-ear monitors. This coupler consists of a measurement microphone and an acoustic coupler to couple the microphone and the in-ear monitor to simulate the human ear. The objective of this test is to calibrate the SPL reading of this setup on REW. In this test, I'll be using the following equipment. The uh, IC711 compliant plinth coupler. The type is E610A. This is the one that I have. And I will use also another coupler. Is this the same uh, 711 compliant coupler, but without microphones. This is only a coupler as you can see uh, the one that I hold in my left hand. I will use this IEC 711 coupler with another measurement microphone to calculate the uh, correction factor of this uh, IEC coupler. This is the ND9B SPL calibrator and the uh, UMIC1 measurement microphone and the RME Babyface Pro FS as the audio interface. And as mentioned previously, the Rode VXLR Plus XLR to 3.5 mm adapter. Primant BM829S through RMS Digital Multimeter will be used as the voltmeter to measure the headphone output level. And I'll be using the uh, Atimotic ER2XR to verify the SPL calibration of the setup. As per IEC 60268-7 recommendation, when we measure in in monitor, it is recommended that the measurement is done at an audio level of 94 dB SPL at 500 Hz. The calibration method in this video is similar to the level calibration procedure described in the following document from GRASS. But I will be using a different equipment. Instead of the GRASS 42AP or 42AA piston phone, I will be using the ND9B SPL calibrator and then couple it to the IEC 711 coupler. This is how I calibrate the IEC 711 coupler before I do any measurement. But for now, I need to calculate the correction factor for this setup in order to get the accurate SPL reading. The correction factor is an SPL attenuation factor by the IEC 711 coupler, calculated by comparing the SPL reading 
of the measurement microphone when calibrated directly using the SPL calibrator without the IEC coupler and the SPL reading when the measurement microphone is attached to the IEC 711 coupler. In this picture, setup A showing the UMIC-1 measurement microphone coupled directly to the ND9B calibrator. And setup B showing the IEC 711 coupler in between the UMIC-1 and ND9B calibrator. The correction factor is calculated by subtracting reading of setup A by the reading of setup B. Setup A seems to be quite easy to do in the beginning, but in reality, it is not as straightforward as it seems. The reason is that the mini DSP UMIC-1 doesn't fit properly on the mic adapter of the calibrator. It is pretty loose. The mic adapter seems to be designed for half an inch of microphone with around 12.7 mm in diameter while the diameter of the UMIC-1 is only around 11.9 mm. The SPL reading I got from this setup is quite far from the expected 94 dB SPL and then a bit inconsistent. Therefore, I need a workaround to improve the fitting. To improve the fitting, I use 14 mm O-ring. I tried to put between one O-ring to four O-rings inside the adapter. I did multiple measurements for the uh, five different fittings, which is without O-ring, with one, two, three, up to four O-rings. With better fitting, I found that the uh, SPL reading is a lot more consistent. Now showing inserting three O-rings. After the O-rings inserted, now I have to gently push the adapter to the measurement microphone mini DSP UMIC-1. With the O-rings, the adapter fits tightly on the measurement microphone. The following are the SPL readings of the UMIC-1 when fitted to the ND9B calibrator without and with the O-rings for setup A. As we see, the readings varies between 99.6 to 95.4 dB SPL and none close to 94 dB SPL. For correction factor calculation, what we need is just the reading differences. Therefore, it is okay for the reading not to show exactly 94 dB SPL. Setup B is without any O-ring and the reading has been pretty consistent between measurements. By subtracting readings of setup A with 95.2 dB reading of setup B, we got the correction factor ranging from 0.2 to 4.4 dB. What we need to know is which correction factor is the most accurate to be used to calibrate my setup. One way to verify which correction factor is the most accurate 
is to verify the uh, calibration with an in-ear monitor with specified sensitivity. Measure the in-ear monitor sensitivity with the measurement setup and observe the result. As you can see in the table, I set the 0 0.9 dB correction factor in bold. That is because after some verification tests, 0 0.9 dB is the correct correction factor for my setup. With 0 0.9 dB correction factor, that means when I calibrate the uh, IEC 711 coupler with 94 dB SPL sound from the ND9B calibrator, I shall calibrate the SPL reading of the uh, IEC 711 coupler to 93.1 dB SPL, which is 94 dB minus the uh, 0 0.9 dB correction factor. Now let's calibrate the SPL reading of the setup on REW. My setup has been connected to REW. At the bottom right corner of the screen, we see the REW SPL meter. The reading on the SPL meter is now in red, meaning that the reading is not yet calibrated. After calibration, the digits will turn to white. First, we will insert the uh, mic adapter of the uh, ND9B calibrator to the IEC 711 coupler. Then, we will mount the uh, ND9B calibrator on the uh, IEC 711 coupler. And we will turn on the uh, calibrator at 94 dB SPL at 1 kHz. Next is to click the calibrate button on the uh, SPL meter and select the signal source to use an external signal. Then click OK. In the SPL reading calibration window, set the reading to 93.1 dB SPL. Then click Finish. Then click OK. As you can see, now the digit's color turned to white. That means it's already calibrated. That's all for the calibration process. And now let's verify the setup with this calibration. To verify the uh, SPL calibration, I will use antibiotic ER2XR with sensitivity specified as 96 dB SPL at 100 millivolt at 1 kilohertz. That means if I drive ER2XR with a 100 millivolt audio signal at 1 kHz, I expect to see 96 dB SPL reading on the REW SPL meter. In this setup, we will use a special DIY cable, kind of a Kelvin clip, to measure signal level of the headphone output. The cable will split the headphone output to the voltmeter and to the ER2XR. And I will set the output signal to 100 millivolt at 1 kilohertz. At the bottom right of the screen is the REW SPL meter, showing the SPL reading of the IEC 711 coupler. And on top of it is the voltmeter reading from the Bryman BM829S. First, I will measure the left channel of ER2XR. ER2XR is inserted into the uh, IEC 711 coupler until all the flanges of the uh, silicon ear tip flushed into the coupler. The desired insertion depth is until the edge of the ear tip flange at the same level as the edge of the coupler. This is to make sure that the uh, insertion depth is repeatable every time the IEM is reinserted into the coupler and the IEM nozzle is to be positioned as straight as possible.
I usually use my fingernail to gauge and feel the insertion depth of the ear tip. I will now play back a 100 millivolt 1 kilohertz signal. As you can see, the reading of the voltmeter is exactly 100 millivolt, and the SPL reading of the REW SPL meter is exactly 96 dB SPL. That means this calibration is accurate. I will now test the right channel. I will change the probe to measure the right channel output voltage. Now I will play back the same 100 millivolt signal on the right channel. And as we can see, the uh, SPL reading is also the same 96 dB SPL. Now I will reinsert and measure the uh, right channel one more time. As we can see that the test is repeatable with consistent result. That's all for this video. The summary is that we can use the ND9B SPL calibrator to calibrate the IEC 711 coupler. On my setup, 0.9 dB is the uh, correction factor when calibrating the uh, IEC 711 coupler with 94 dB SPL signal from the uh, ND9B SPL calibrator. I hope this video is useful and thanks for watching.